everyone, this is Blake with Recruitment Hockey coming at you with another Grease Board Talk. Today we're going to talk about the off winger and some tips that they can do in order to generate more offense and be defensively uh, sufficient. So the first thing we're going to talk about is being able to get off the wall. So why is that important? So often in youth hockey, um, the game is taught to be played in quadrants. So playing, I'm the right wing. so. I have to stay on the right side. I'm a centerman, so I stay in the middle. I'm the left wing, I stay on the left side. Uh, that's just not the way the game of hockey works. And it needs to be changed to where players are playing F1, F2, F3. So why this is important, we're gonna kind of talk about it today. Getting off the wall and using all of the ice. Just because you're a right winger doesn't mean that you have a shot caller on and every time you cross the, the middle of the ice that you get zapped and have to go back to the right side, all right? So the first thing, getting off the wall. I'm gonna draw up a little thing here. Find this winger on this side. I'm gonna to try to draw it into a spot. I'm right here. All right. There is nothing wrong with coming up here through the middle and then attacking this part of the ice. All right. Obviously, there's a lot of other things going on, but making these defensemen, isolating them, and making them make a decision. Maybe they stay with you. Maybe they let you go and they open up, to spring something. All right. You also get the centerman coming through, and you're also just expanding the offense. All right, so being able to get off the wall here, attack the center of the ice, and keep going down the ice is mightily important. All right, so getting off the wall that way in the D zone, but also being able to do it in the O zone. All right, so if I'm coming in, and I'm right here, being able to come in here, get off the wall, we're opening up all this space. All right, there's a lot of different things that you can do by getting off the wall and not using this as a defender. All right? As a defender, of course I want you against the wall because it's an extra defender. You're not gonna be able to go through the wall and make a play, all right? So being able to keep everything to that side is what a defense should want you to do, all right? So being able to get off two, three feet into these areas, you open up a lot more offense, able to make passes, drop passes, cut across the ice, and just being able to open up that offense. All right, so super basic, get off the wall. Now when I talk about slashes and fades, so here I am in my D zone. Again, we want to isolate these defenders. You're not going to get shocked with the shot caller if you cross the center of the ice. All right. When we're going, let's say we're on this side, we're coming up, a slash is taken off in a beeline, straight line across the ice this way. All right. A fade is the opposite, coming up through here in the middle and then fading back out to the outside isolating those defenders. So why that's important, you keep hearing me say isolate these defenders. Let's say I'm here, you have to be able to read this. So let's say it's a messy pass. Maybe it's a rim pass, fumbled puck, uh, going out to break out to this side. All right, odds are this defender's gonna break. All right, me as the off winger, I gotta read that and slash across the middle to that open ice, All right? There's no reason for me to stay on this side where there's no open ice and there's already a defender defending it. All right. Whoa! I dropped my pen. All right. So when I'm going, that's a slash. I'm reading this defender. If he goes down, I go through. Even if they have that F3, let's say they have their F3 right here. All right. Pull that F3. They're probably going to stay with you and watch you. All right, that defender will go through the middle. It just gets the play moving, opens up a lot of different space. So we just isolated that defender, but it's on, it's on the offhand winger to read what this defender is doing. If this defender stays here, we'll talk about that right now. All right, so when we go to a fade, obviously we're going to be fading away from the puck. Assuming their defenders are right here inside the dots, you're here. All right. Let's say this defender, let's say it's a clean pass up to our breakout right here. Being able to cut, up, cut in, right, drawing the offense, drawing the other wingers, making them, you know, moving without the puck. Clean pass, this defender starts back out of the zone. You being able to get here, start fading to the outside, isolates this defender. This defender, what's he going to do? He's obviously not going to go outside the dots, but now he's got to respect you and continue to travel back with you. All right, so being able to cut through here, all right, you're reading the play, clean pass, this defender's staying high. Now I gotta fade back out to the outside. All right, so super basic concepts that really are never taught um, in the game of hockey, especially to younger players that, you know, they're being coached. Um, 
it's very important that I've said it a couple times in this video that you're not wearing a shot collar. So being the F1, F2, F3, it's okay to move across the ice, man. I don't know. You know, if I'm on this side of the ice, it's okay as long as I, if I get here, I get here. Of course, I still have responsibilities on this side of the ice, but it's okay because I got to be able to, you know, read and react and get back. So not being a robot, being creative. Obviously, we never want to end up with five guys on the puck, but being able to read and react to where you're going. All right. It's also on your wingers and your centermen and, you know, the other players on the ice to fill your lane. So if I'm coming across, I better have somebody fill in my lane sooner or later, right? I hope that that makes sense. And I think it's a very um, helpful thing. And, you know, obviously getting your eyes up and being able to read and react is, a, is an awesome skill to practice and learn. And these are just a couple of ways to continue to do that. And don't be afraid to make mistakes. You know, push the envelope and be creative. Don't be a robot. Right? A lot of hockey nowadays is taught just robotically. Go up and down. Stay on your quadrant of the ice. All right, be creative. That's how you'll create offense. Be defensively sound. That's how you create good defense. So, again, this has been a video with Blake Hackbarth at Recruitment Hockey. Please like, comment, share, subscribe. And I appreciate everybody that has watched all the way through the end of this video. Uh, thanks again.